Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Crashing Waves. Where we last left off, we were collecting, or we were supposed to, we've been tasked with collecting info on Dimitri. So we're just going to look through the binoculum here. Okay, bug Dimitri's office. That's the first item on our list, it seems like. That's not too bad. I'd say that seems like a good place to start. I'm still post-commentating, but... I was really happy with the result of last episode, so I think this might be... I don't know if I want to make it a complete trend, because there is something nice and visceral about hearing me react to gameplay. I managed but to still. outfit this forged painting with a bug. Okay, but like, you literally drew Sly on the painting. Was Sly on the original painting? Because if he isn't, then Dimitri will probably notice the difference. <laughs> That's like when, you know, I don't know, it's like if Lex Luthor, like, you know, kidnapped Lois and then literally left a little note card for Superman going, Hey man, it's me, she's here. Like, you want to make it a little bit more difficult than that, you know? But then as I say that, I realize that a lot of supervillains and super sleuths like to leave behind little tracer identifiers to recognize it's them and it's stupid when they do it too i don't know why people th do that like w we talk about cat burglars or at least i talk about cat burglars in my sleep when i'm dreaming of different things i've been told i, I in my sleep i talk about cat burglars but like what's their main what what's their end game you know what i mean What's the end game of the cat burglar? Because if you are leaving behind a little chemtrail for people to find you, like, okay, make up your mind. Do you want fame or do you want riches? You can have both, but if you're going straight for, if you're gonna take the sneaky way to get riches, I don't think it's wise to try to leave behind a little paper trail, you know? Because then doesn't that make it easier for them to catch you? Don't you want them to not catch you? The schematic indicates that door is locked from the inside. Well, that would be why people get keys. For the direct approach? Swell, because the indirect approach is way up there through that air vent. Way up there? It's literally just above the door. That's not way up there. If it was on the ceiling, then I would say it's way up there. All right, so we got to figure out how to get past these rats because we've got this nice little painting of Sly that supposedly is not meant to arouse any suspicion and we gotta figure out how to get it with to Dimitri's office without getting hit because if we get hit once then the paintings destroyed and we gotta do this whole mission over from the beginning and as we have seen in the last episode combat now is not what combat was in Sly 1 if you trigger guards that is a bad time, no matter who you're playing as. I would say, unless you're Murray, you really don't want to be, like, drawing undue heat to yourself. So, let's just get lucky with the fact that that guy... Whoa, okay. Hey, 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 uh, The controller's doing that thing again, where it sticks... One of the analog sticks down, and that's going to be really tricky. Because sometimes you want to use the analog stick and not the directional pad, because you want the subtlety of motion... Okay, let's just sneak along here. Dimitri strikes me as like one of those white guys that wants desperately to be black, so he like speaks in what he thinks is gangsta lingo, but has no clue what he's talking about. Ugh, he's a wannabe beatnik. The, the worst kind of beatniks. You know? And I say this as a halfway hipster. Which is to say that I have contempt for fellow hipsters, but I also must acknowledge that I am a hipster myself. Nice work, Sly. Yes. The bug's in position. If you manage to get the original painting back to me in one piece, 
I can sell it through my internet connection. Ooh, your internet connections. Are you running on a 2.16 HK modem? Well, fancy boy. Fancy prancing. So, we still have the clues in this game, and there's the vault if we want to try to track down all the clues and get the sort of little power-ups that we had in Sly 1, but they aren't as immediately necessary as they would be in Sly 1. Like, you can pretty much just run through the whole game without looking for the clues, so we're not going to be... I mean, I did 100% Sly 1. I don't think it's worth my time to really 100% Sly 2. I actually haven't even beaten Sly 2, so we'll see what happens when I reach the points of the game that I haven't really... spotted by the flashlight guard. Jesus, Bentley, I get it. I, I, why would I... In, in, why would I intentionally try to get spotted by people who can hear me? There aren't even flashlight guards around. I'm on the roof. There's that one. But, like, I was on the roof. Why are you screaming at me like I just made an uh-oh? I, I, <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. All right, let's just, let's just chill out here on the rooftops. You're going to see throughout the rest of this game, rooftops where you want to be. You never, it's almost like a game of the floor is lava. You really don't want to be on the ground in Sly 2 too often. If you're on the ground, you're asking for trouble. Because that's where the hard enemies, that's where they roam and play. So as you can see here, we're on the internet. And we're going to sell the gold painting. You can see there that the big thing is that a lot of the sort of power-ups that you would have gotten through the different little vaults in Sly 1. Now... There's a system where if you can, well, we'll reach it eventually, but there's a way that you can get little rare treasures and sell them online, you know, in a sort of barter system like that. And then you can upgrade the characters with special moves and abilities. But we aren't, uh, that's not, gonna, we may do that, but it's not going to be, aside from one thing, which is like inherently necessary for the game, we're not going to be gunning after that one too much. So here you see... An important mechanic of Sly 2, this little thing called patience. Because if we were to jump down to the mission right there, we would get in trouble with the giant uh, evil Pumbaa. So we have to wait for him to pass by so we can hit the mission start. Intercepted an email from Dimitri. This is running on emails anymore. This is such an early 2000s game. People are using emails. Now it's like, now Bentley would have to say, I just slid into the DMs with Dimitri. <laughs> and he... We will find out what he's hiding. Alright, well, let's hit the bell. And who could it be? Hey, it's Dimitri, nightclub owner. You notice how his eyes got kind of a Howl 9000 thing running for it? Mmm, hit me with those disco beats. Oh, this is exactly what you don't want to see. He's walking in the path of the flashlight guards. It's actually something that I wonder if... The thing with these little s collections of games is... Um, I, th I talked about this a little bit on the Sly 1 playthrough. But I am a fan of HD remaster collections of older games. Because I think really outside of illegal pirating with emulators, it is the most efficient way of playing older games because the thing is that video games unlike any other form of media are the quickest thing to date and what's like groundbreaking in one year will be like out of date and unplayable two years later you know it's like the most fast ever changing like entertainment medium i think i've ever seen and you know the thing is that because it's built off of technology that is ever growing and expanding and aging as well aging at a fast fast rate sometimes you run into little bugs so you know for example here we see a little <laughs> uh, uh, Dimitri walking in a circle because this flashlight guard won't get out of his way <laughs> which I, I don't think is really um, how that's supposed to operate but it definitely was doing that here it doesn't really do that as often in the original game. At least I never saw that happen in my PlayStation 2 copy. Uh, and that's the thing, is that I actually do like it when 
you can have these sort of older games on newer consoles. At the very least, it makes it easier to record. Speaking as a video director, it makes it easier to... Okay, so Dimitri, if he had any vision, should totally be able to see me. But, uh... Why is he ASMRing in my ear? What's going on here? He should totally see me, but... Alright. Uh... Aha! I don't know why he, he was definitely making lots of noises. He had no idea you were watching while he typed in that secret code. Well, uh, all outward appearances don't really clue me into Dimitri being much of a grand intellect, you know? He's a bit too up his own tail, you know what I mean? Ah, I gotta dig that juicy bass. Uh, that's the one thing that the Sly games will always have over every other game franchise. They know the thing about Tasty Bass. So, look at this! It's, I, uh, that icon means only one thing. It's time for everyone's favorite pink hippopotamus, Morty! Yeah! Uh, you can't, I, I apologize. There's been an error in the lineup. Uh, Barney is a purple dinosaur. Uh, not a pink hippopotamus. The uh, true identity of the person that we need to see is um, is Murray. Yeah, this is Murray. So now here we see once again, like I talked about in SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, the grand advancement of the PlayStation 2. We are playing as someone other than Sly for the first time ever. For the first time ever. That doesn't count. The first time ever. But that was the grand advancement of Sly 2, is that you got to... Ooh. Gotta love them little bass runs. As a bassist myself, I appreciate the majesty that goes into playing a bass like... Like, that guy was all over the upper fretboard. Because it's definitely, if it's not a synth bass, it's an electric bass. And uh-oh. The rats. Oh no! The bullfrogs! They have spotted my kind. Oh, okay. So now here we see the combat, which is a bit of a mess. You want to really take it up to the roofs. You don't want to be fiddle diddling on the streets when you're doing combat like this, because then you're just asking for trouble. But at the very least, if we were going to accidentally get spotted by one of the guards and get into a combat scenario, it was for the best if we were playing as Murray, because he's really the only one who can kind of handle combat. Everyone else has tremendous difficulty handling those kinds of endeavors. So, what you got to say now, Bentley? I need you to make your way back to the aqua pump room and sabotage it. Jeez, I don't know. How am I supposed to get past these lasers? You should be able to break that power box by throwing something at it. Yeah, but wouldn't the lasers spot the flying object? I mean, if, if in that scenario, why don't you just, like, jump through it? If it, they're fast enough that you can not spot them when the Oh, whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a cartoon turtle talking to a cartoon hippo. If I overthink it, I'll get sad. Okay, well, there we go. Did not want to pick up that barrel just yet, but look, there we are. Also, like, what's the ice here for? He's, uh, Dimitri's just got, like, a little ice machine in this, like, random basement cellar. Alright. So, just pick that up. Gotta find something else. There we go. Hopefully I can break this before... Yeah, great. Give me some riches. Give me some muns. Because muns are important now. So. Let's just, uh, take this guy out right now. Uh-oh, Bentley seemed a bit worried about that one. Just, mm. And now... Oh my god! He disintegrated! That man had a wife and kids! Murray, you killed him! He's dead! Oh my god! Oh, the humanity! Oh, it's because it's a warthog! This game isn't rated T for extreme violence! Oh my god! How could this be dumb? 
Oh no! Oh no! And now he's taking on the poor, f extremely French rats. Oh my God! They're suffering in the water pump. Oh my God! The gears—they're chewing them up. They're not gonna. Oh Lord! They can't live through that. Oh my God! Look at it bubbling over. Holy cow! That did it, Murray. With the aqua pump out of commission, they'll be forced to root water through the old pipe tower. Those fools! They're playing right into our hands! What do you mean, those? they're playing right into your hands? You just killed them! Murray's on a bloodbath! This is horrible! Ugh, oh, what's your slideshow gotta say now, Bentley? Okay, fellas, I've constructed a plan to get at the clockwork tail feathers. But we'll need to pull off a few more jobs to set things up for the heist. First, Sly will have to pick a few pockets in the theater so that we'll have access to the Spotlight Control Center. Once that's accomplished, we'll be able to turn off all the security around the printing press. Mm -hmm. We'll need your muscle, Murray, to take out all the exterior alarm horns. Mm -hmm. they, well, they weren't there before. The guards while we pull off the big job. Well, yeah. And finally, we'll need to get into the disco tech to drop this mirror ball. Trust me, it's all part of the plan. All right, well, I mean, you are a turtle with glasses. It would be hard to question your intellect. So, anyway, I say this is a good place to wrap it up. If you like what you see, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ding the bell to be notified about when new videos come out. Smash that like button and share the video with your friends on the screen you'll see more episodes of the gaming weekend and more of next videos with serenade of caffeine and we'll see you all next week bye, -bye.